You can't burn fat and build muscle at the same time. No, that goes against the bro code. You absolutely can't. You have to be fat when you're bulking and you have to be losing muscle when you're cutting. That's all there is to it. Come on, that's not how this works. Okay, we have to look deeper than that. We're smarter than that, people. We know that although there is some merit to that, it definitely is old school. So what I wanna teach you in this video, and I need you to stick with me through the entire thing, is that the body is very much so capable of building muscle and burning fat at the same time, even if your bro friends wanna tell you it's not true. So let's go ahead and let's break down some really interesting research, but also let's break down some common sense. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos Tuesday, Friday, Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. There's a red button there, I need you to hit that. It's gonna allow you to subscribe, and then that funky looking little bell icon is gonna turn on notifications, so you ding, get a notification whenever I post a new video. I also wanna make sure that you check out Mudwater. There's a link down in the description for you to check them out. They're a really cool couple of guys that are doing some big things. Basically, they have found a way to get the body the same kind of response that you would get from coffee, but without all the caffeine. And they've done it in a really cool adaptogenic form. So I encourage you to just go check them out down in the description below after you watch this video. Big shout out to those guys, they're awesome. All right, now let's go ahead and break this down. So, burning fat and building muscle is not possible at the exact moment in time. Not at the exact nanosecond. Right this very second, I might be burning fat, but when I do eat something, chances are I'm not, okay? Over the course of time, however, whether that course of time is one day or one week or one month, you absolutely can. It all comes down to just when's, when are things happening, like what the actual timing is. So just because you cannot physiologically burn fat and build muscle at a cellular level at one specific point in time doesn't mean that it can't happen over the course of a day or a week. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at one particular study that really proved this and was really kind of the poster child for this whole methodology in the first place. It was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and it was a one month study that took a look at 40 individuals divided into two groups. So two groups of 20. Now, both groups went through the same kind of conditions, the same kind of workouts, the same kind of very structured protocol, except one group consumed a normal protein diet of 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, and another group consumed a higher protein diet of 2.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. Now, the only other thing with the diet that had to be different there was the fat content. They kept the carbs the exact same, but the fats were slightly different. Okay, the lower protein, normal protein group consumed 35% of their calories from fat, and the higher protein group consumed 15% of their calories from fat. So slight difference there. Now the other difference that they did is the higher protein group allocated most of their protein to the post-workout window via a whey protein shake. So they did this so that they could kind of, I don't know, either debunk or at least prove that whole theory of protein after a workout. But more or less, I think they just wanted to allocate most of the protein there because it would make a little bit more sense post-workout. Now one thing that's very important that is absolutely pivotal to this study was the fact that it was extremely structured. Nothing was left to chance. These guys did not make their own meals. They practically didn't even feed themselves. Okay, these guys, the scientists made the food for them. They measured it out, they weighed it out, and they served it to them in very precise intervals. So everything was very structured, including the workouts. But the results ended up being astonishing. Both groups ended up losing fat. The high protein group lost 4.8 kilograms and the lower protein group lost 3.5 kilograms. Okay, so they both lost fat, but the actual high protein group ended up gaining 1.2 kilograms of muscle. Then when you break it down even further, you find that the high protein group lost 20% body fat, whereas the lower protein, normal protein group lost 15% body fat. Neither group lost muscle. And like I said, the higher protein group actually gained muscle. So what did this prove? It proved that you literally can burn fat and build muscle at the same time, even if you're not doing any weird kind of diet. You're not doing keto, you're not doing fasting, you're not doing anything, you're just eating, okay? You're just having structured training, structured eating, and you're starting from a baseline that is pretty neutral, okay? Now, the reasoning behind this is kind of interesting. Now, there's four real reasons, at least within this study, that we could find why this occurred. Number one was they implemented HIT style workouts, high intensity interval training. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that that's important. High intensity interval training sparks these enzymatic processes that allow the body to burn more fat for fuel and preserves muscle. It triggers all kinds of different cascades, hormonally, enzymatically, everything. So that was very important. Now, additionally, the whey protein probably played a role as well. 
Okay, that's a very insulinogenic compound. Whey protein spikes your insulin. So meaning the group that had a larger amount of whey potentially had more of that whey protein go towards muscle protein synthesis, which leads me into the other reason. The third reason was the fact that they had a consistent muscle protein synthesis going on. Okay, they had enough protein going on consistently where they were able to keep muscle protein synthesis high. My point in saying that is even if you're in a deficit, a calorie deficit, if your muscle protein synthesis is high, you can still build muscle even though you're in a deficit. It all comes down to how those calories are allocated. And sometimes that can even be determined by your genetic potential. We don't have control over everything. And then lastly, it was a very structured protocol. Okay, if all of us had someone that could prepare meals for us and give them to us at very important predefined times, we would all have the results that we really want. We could build some muscle, we could burn some fat. Now, I wanna use an analogy that I thought was pretty interesting. Okay, if you take two plants, two different kinds of plants, and you put them in the same pot, okay, now they're gonna have different needs, they're gonna have different requirements, okay, but they're definitely going to need sun and they're going to need rain in order to grow. But they can't get sun and rain at the same time, right? So you have the sun providing what they need for photosynthesis, and you have the rain providing the nourishment to be able to allow them to get nourishment, rather, from the soil. So it's the same kind of almost bulking and cutting kind of thing happening at the same time. Now, we look back at the old school way of looking at things, and we're told that we have to go into a clear and defined bulking period and cutting period because it's impossible to build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Again, what, who is it to say that I can't have a bulking and a cutting phase within the same day, right? If I'm sitting down to eat, I'm bulking. If I'm fasting between meals, I'm cutting. Bulk, cut, bulk, cut. It's all the scale at which you look at things. So stop overthinking things and look at it realistically. Now, there's another thing that I want to talk about that's really important, though. If you are just starting out or you are overweight, you will commonly find that it's easier to build muscle and burn fat. And it's because of a couple different reasons. The excess calories that you have in the way of energy from excess fat can actually be utilized for muscle protein synthesis. Okay, now don't get me wrong. Fat doesn't directly turn into muscle and muscle doesn't turn into fat. That's not how it works. But the fatty acids that get released from your fat stores can actually provide your body the energy that it needs for the process of muscle protein synthesis. Okay, muscle protein synthesis takes energy to actually occur. If you have extra energy on demand in the way of fat, you make that process a lot easier. So that's why overweight people can usually burn fat faster and build muscle quicker. Okay, they have more fat to burn, so the delta is a little bit easier. They can just get rid of that fat, but it also provides them with the nourishment they need to allow muscle protein synthesis. But there's also one other interesting thing. Overweight people or people that haven't worked out a whole lot usually have a higher level of insulin resistance. Now you might be thinking, that sounds terrible. Why would I want insulin resistance? Well, insulin resistance a lot of times with overweight individuals is localized to the fat. So basically what that means is their fat cells become more insulin resistant. It's a way of the body to sort of protect itself. Say, hey, wait a minute, we don't need any more fat. So we're gonna turn, uh, turn ourselves a little bit resistant to this insulin so these fat cells don't get any bigger. Well, what that means is when muscle protein synthesis starts, that insulin that would normally go to the fat cell gets shuttled over to the muscle cell because the fat cell is saying no more. So it goes to the muscle cell, which means it's diverting energy and it's diverting nutrients into the muscle, which means the muscle can grow. So overweight people build muscle easier, but they also lose fat easier. So that might be why you see people that are a little overweight when they first start out, they have tremendous results. But the fact of the matter is, don't worry about a bulk and a cut. You should be bulking and cutting every single day. It all comes down to the nanosecond and what you're doing at that very point in time. I appreciate you keeping it locked in on this video as I ramble. And as always, if you have ideas for other videos or specific topics you want to hear me talk about, make sure you let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you soon.